the sun salutation with awareness on body alignment in each of the 12 positions. So before we start checking our standing posture, let's start from the top. We need to keep our chin pulled in towards the chest so that the back of the head is aligned with the back. We need to keep our shoulders pressed slightly back and down, away from the side walls of the chest, so they don't interfere with the natural expansion and contraction of the chest in the natural breathing process. We need to keep a strong hip and pelvic region, so the tailbone behind and the pubic bone in front strongly stretching downwards and pulling towards each other, creating nice stable hips. We need a strong leg position with the thighs rotated inwards, the weight on the full soles of the feet and the shin bone and the calf muscles rotated outwards. So the weight should be on the balls of the feet, the front of the feet, the heels and the outer edges and we have nice arches in the inner edges of the feet. When we stand this way, we should feel very, very balanced and even and equal on the left and right halves of the body. Then exhaling, we bring our hands to the chest into pranam position with a feeling like we're drawing the energy to the heart center. Now the fingers again are correctly aligned and we should turn them slightly away from the chest. Uh, if we kept the uh, fingers in towards the chest, again you're constricting and restricting the chest a bit. So turned away slightly. The next position, Hastuthanasan, raised arms position, interlock the thumbs, stretching the arms forward. As we interlock, we get an equal and even stretch in the arms and we arch back, very careful not to dump into the lower back. So keep stretching the spine as you arch back. And if you find you're not very flexible, then initiate the arch from the upper back and arch back just a bit. If you find you're more flexible, then you can initiate this back bend from a little lower down, closer to the waist. So bend back. And then Padahastasan, hand to feet pose. Stretch from the hips, keep lengthening the spine, coming down with a flattened back. Looking at the fingertips as we come down so that we don't round up the back. And the final position of this posture would be when the upper body is completely flattened onto the lower half. And if you have conditions like hypertension, neck problems, cervical spondylosis, then come down only halfway, placing your hands above the knees and coming halfway in this deep forward bend. And if you have no such problems, then you can come down all the way as much as you can. You can start by bouncing towards the floor, relaxing and loosening up the back muscles and slowly working over the days, over the weeks, over the years to come into the full for the Hastasan position. And the next pose, Ashwa Sanchalanasan, the equestrian pose, fingertips are down. We swing the left leg far back. We bring that right leg in the 90 degree angle. Our fingertips are on the floor. The back shin and the top of the foot is nicely pressed into the floor. The chest is lifted and the pelvis is descending straight down towards the floor. The shoulders should and hind shoulders relaxed. If the back doesn't round up, you can also try and flatten the palms on the floor. And then Parvathasan, the mountain pose, we tuck the left toes under, swing the right leg back, and we arrange the body so that we have an equal and even stretch in the front and back halves. The arms and the legs evenly stretched, elbows and knees firm, equal weight not only on the front and back halves, but also on the left and right sides of the body. From here, we progress into the deeper version of this stretch, the Adho Mukshvanasan, downward facing dog, where we exaggerate the lumbar curve and sink the head to the floor or towards the floor. So in this posture, the upper arm muscles work very strongly and the biceps and the triceps contract towards each other. And sometimes when the arms are working so strongly, we kind of let the legs go limp. Don't let that happen. Keep the legs working strongly. Keep the heels pressed into the floor or then stretching towards the floor. Next posture, posture Ashtang Namaskar. Salute with eight limbs. Knees come down directly, no weight on the knees. Elbows bend back. Remain close to the body as the chest comes between the hands and the chin to the floor. So we need to have strong shoulder muscles, chest muscles, so that we don't fall into the floor. We're lightly grazing the floor. And from here into Bhujangasan, remember we need to lengthen before we arch back. Stretch the spine forward, lengthen it and then arch back and into a gentle back bend. So initially we can take lots of help of the hands. As the back muscles become stronger, less help with the hands and make the back work harder. And then we press back again into Parvatasan and from there into the deeper version 
Adho Mukhshwana Asan. Again, focus on evenness on the front and back halves, on the left and right halves. Up on your toes, get ready to step the left foot forward between the hands back into Ashva Sanchalan. Now, if you're not able to get the foot forward in one go, then as far as it comes and then catch it with the same side hand, drag it forward instead of pulling the hands back. From here, once again into Padahastasan, use your fingertips so that you don't strain the knee. Step the back foot forward, relax the body downwards and practice this deep forward bend. Hastuttanasan, stable on the feet, weight on the full feet, upper body relaxed. As you interlock the thumbs, stretch and arch back. Exhaling, we bring the hands to the chest in pranam position. So this was 12 positions leading with the left leg. And then we do the same leading with the right leg. 